right, all right, all right. We are back. We are back. I believe everything is okay. The sound issues have been rectified. I apologize for that, uh, my good people out there in YouTube. I don't know what was going on with that. I just had to shut everything down and get it back up and running. So uh, I do believe that we are good to go now. I hope that some people did hang around to wait for Stormy B-Man to come back. You know, you can't hold a storm back, right? So that's where we are right now. I want to say good morning and good afternoon to some because of the time difference and good evening. We are out here and uh, we are ready to talk about some stuff this morning. And um, yeah, I, I apologize for that again, family. So how's everybody doing out there? I got, I see we got Gil Coles, Shadow 979, J1 Pro, Lars Dawkins, The Pimpin, uh, and Joseph Brown. What's going on with you brothers this morning? Thank you for stopping back in. And uh, I want to say shout out to Fanon this morning uh, when he was doing his OG boxing talk. I heard him say as he was closing out that uh, whoever wants to get on or whatever, because I wasn't scheduled to come on and no one had said anything to me directly. But when he, he mentioned my name, you know, Stormy B-Man answered the call. So here I am and I'm ready to uh, do my part in bringing some uh, content to you brothers and sisters out there who want to talk some boxing and who want to interact and interplay with one another because we are one big family. And uh, I just want to say I appreciate everything people do, you know, mentioning my name out there or whatever, because I'm still a pup in the game trying to learn and come up and I'm learning from everyone else. But uh, it's, it's very exciting to be able to do things like this and bring people together on one accord, uh, which is the boxing family for us here on YouTube. So uh, thank you so much for nine for that. And for the brothers and sisters who anxiously await to see what uh, Stormy B-Man is bringing next. So uh, with that said, I wanted to say that the, the title of uh, this show that I, I put in is uh, The Significance of the Chief Second. Okay. And uh, I, I often have a great deal to say about the Chief Second, which is referring in boxing to the corner man. OK, uh, the corner man doesn't necessarily just mean the trainer, but the chief second is the head trainer, along with those who act in correspondence with the transactions that take place within the fighter's corner. And uh, their significance is tremendous because when the fighter returns to his stool in between rounds, it is these group of people who get things together under the head trainer and uh, keep the fighter focused, replenished, and refreshed to go out and continue to execute his game plan for the following round. So that's an acknowledgement for the work and team that puts things together behind the scenes. Because I say behind the scenes because sometimes we don't think about those guys. We just think about the two combatants that are in there. But the, the combatant who has been properly prepared and is conditioned and ready to face whatever is uh, thrust before him, it is typically this team of people who have put him in that type of position as long as he has been able to grasp the knowledge, experience, and the objectives that they have placed before him so he can go out and execute his work. Okay. Uh, Sheldon Holmes is back in the house. He says, we back. Shadow 979 says, it's much better. Uh, Joseph Brown says, we appreciate that Stormy B, man. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I'm out here and I'm, I'm trying to do it from a standpoint of uh, representing properly. You know, this is this is what it is. You know, this is what it is. And uh, I just try to do it to the best of my ability. Now, uh, we recently saw something pretty interesting 
regarding Chiefs seconds uh, this this weekend in uh, yesterday's big fight between uh, Sergey Kovalev and Anthony Yard, and in the uh, in the uh, co-main event of that fight uh, that preceded the championship fight that we all were looking to tune in for. Though I did not know those fighters in that, in that uh, particular uh, match, it was very interesting because in, in that match, both uh, combatants, their corners played a role as well. Uh, the, the, the Russian gentleman, and the other gentleman who ended up winning the fight, forgive me on the names because I don't have notes in front of me. I'm kind of doing this off of the fly. But I wanted to say that the the the, uh, the favorite fighter who ended up losing that bout, his corner did a good job of keeping him in that fight because he was very fatigued and he was incurring some damage in that match where... You, you know, the gentleman who ended up victorious, he was basically banging him pillar to post and he was extremely strong. They kept their guy fresh and everything, but they couldn't stop him from getting dropped. I think the three knockdowns in that fight were significant toward uh, the uh, other gentleman prevailing. But you could see the uh, the trickery afoot because even if that third knockdown didn't take place, I think they were going to rob rob the guy. Uh, another uh, sad thing when you look at the scorecards, but at least he did get his victory, and at least he put the man on his ass a few times to show that he was superior. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Justin Brown says, Stormy B-Man, they don't get mentioned at all. They do play a vital role. Clifton Bronson is saying salute to Stormy B-Man and the chat. Yeah, uh, this, the the chief second and uh, the 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 corner man who prepare the fighters. Now in the in the fight against uh, Kovalev and Yard, what I wanted to say when it came down to this particular fight, I I mentioned in my stream yesterday that I felt like Yard had lost the fight before he had even signed the contract, and I still feel that. Pardon me, people, I was taking a drink of water. I still feel that, but I can go into more detail here in what I meant when I said that about him uh, losing the fight way before. What I meant is if the word that has come about is true about his preparation for the fight and in the manner that he has been preparing for fights, if, if this information is true, and one is significantly that he doesn't spar, he doesn't take sparring, uh, I'm sorry, but you are way behind the, uh, the, the level of, of uh, com competing at the world class, you know, because sparring is integral. It's not even about getting in there and punching other people and things like that. Of course, being able to get conditioned by being familiar with contact, uh, where you, you know, you, you, you're, you're absorbing, you're, you're building yourself up physically in that, in that aspect. Uh, and there's a mental conditioning process that goes along with that. However, uh, it is also the barometer that your chief second can make assessments about you in a fight. Whether you can take solid shots, whether you body shots, you readily show the effect of them while you're sparring, whether you are you you know you're you're fatigued from a certain amount of action that may transpire during a sparring round these are key points that a trainer in the gym can make assessments 
about his fighter. He can know when to push him harder. He can know when to pull back. He can know where his fighter is as far as what he's showing with his 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 physical presence, his his external presence. You can see where he's getting a little tired right here. You're seeing where he's mentally strong under pressure, under duress, in tough sparring. There are points that to be made when you're doing this in the gym. And these can take place before a fight, you see? And it gives the coach a point of reference where he can look in and know where your strengths and weaknesses are. If you're just in there slapping pads with guys and he's moving around and there's nothing really else taking place, that's nothing. That's swimming on dry land. How are you going to know that you can float or sink if you don't get out there in the water? You understand? You have to have that aspect of, you know, your training program. Now, you don't even have to take in numerous rounds, but you do need a certain amount of rounds to make assessments in order to know that a fighter is prepped. He's ready to go. You see? And the quality of your sparring, okay? When you're in there and you might be taking jabs in the gym, the coach could stop, call timeout, because in the gym, you could call timeout during a sparring round. You could talk to your fighter. You could get in his ear and you could tell him, hey, man, you're taking those jabs too much. You have to get under that jab. You have to slip that jab. And you have to get your jab off, too, because the more that you're able to get yours off, you'll make the other guy stop, hesitate, ruin his timing. His jab may not come as frequent if you were getting yours in. So these are things that you could do in the gym right then and there to alleviate problems that could come in live action. And we saw in live action with Kovalev that, thank goodness, he had Buddy McGirt in his corner. And Buddy McGirt was a hell of a boxer. If you guys haven't seen or heard about Buddy McGirt's boxing career, please go back and look at some film. A lot of his fights are out there on YouTube. Buddy McGirt was a 140, 147 pound fighter champion who could box. Okay, He had great lateral movement. He had decent power. He threw very good combinations. And before he injured his shoulder, he had a very good left hook. And Buddy was old school. His style is old school, pure boxer puncher. And one of his toughest fights was against Pernell Whitaker, who defeated him twice. But it took a fighter like a great fighter like Pernell Whitaker to turn back the advances of a fighter like Buddy McGirt. So I'm saying all of this to acknowledge the fact that Buddy McGirt got Kovalev to do the most basic thing. And that was to get out front with his jab. You can tr control and dictate the tempo of a fight with your jab. And when you're doing that, you're at safekeeping. Because one, you're controlling the tempo. Two, you're controlling the, the opponent and what's coming back at you. Three, you can utilize the jab in such a manner you could get your rest you could stay sharp and keen as to what's coming in and out. You could know where you are within a round, especially if the jab is scoring. You have to be able to use it multiple ways, okay? You have to be able to use it up and down. You have to be able to use it in combination, meaning you fire double, sometimes triple. You have to feign it. You have to utilize those opportunities when that left is working, or if you're a southpaw, when that right is working, that's straight. So that's the benefit of a good boxer, being able to utilize that skill first and foremost, okay? Then everything else that comes up off of that is as a result of the success of that. 
because some fighters get extremely frustrated when they can't get beyond your jab. And there is a lost art in teaching how to do that. But this is boxing 101. Okay? 101, you know that the jab is what starts the fight and the jab can wrap up the fight. And that is what's important here. You see? So uh, let me go back to the chat just a moment. We got Branulus in the chat. He says, salute at Stormy B-Man. Uh, Joseph Brown says, he also complained a lot to the ref. I hated that. Stop crying and fight. Yes, Joseph Brown, because he was in a he was in an environment that was unfamiliar and it wasn't comfortable for him. So his natural response is to talk to the ref. That's not supposed to be your response at all. You see, the ref don't have nothing to do with you, okay? Especially in Russia, he ain't giving a damn about you. If anything, he gonna go drinking and have some vodka with Kovalev after the fight. You know what I mean? So you're right about that. It's the corner that he should have been in communication with in between the rounds, not looking over to the corner during the fight because you get your damn head knocked off. Gil Cole says... It took a little long on that decision, too. Yeah, about that first fight. Yeah, the decision came. It was like they, they were trying to probably, you know, switch the rounds around and everything. But that third knockdown sealed the fight for the brother. And I'm glad he got the fight. I'm glad he got it. Shadow 979 says, facts. Bonton South D-Town says, what it do? And uh, Cursor says, fact. Gil Cole says, those judges were about to put pull their ski masks down in that fight. <laughs> and he's laughing. <laughs> yeah, man. They probably had the ski masks on hold right there waiting, you know, waiting to see what they were going to do with it, you know. Man, my wife made me a nice little breakfast sandwich on a bagel this morning. Who was that out there last week talking about the bagels? Yeah, I got one this morning, a nice little breakfast sandwich, but I ain't going to eat it until after I'm done talking to you all. So you know I'm going to get through this pretty fast because Stormy and B-Man do like to eat. I told you we can always go back to the point of reference talking about food here on my channel. I'm a foodie. <laughs> so, uh... Joseph Brown says, yeah, Gil Coles, they wanted to rob him, but they couldn't because that ass whooping was too apparent. Listen, man, I've seen great ass whoopings and they still rob a guy. But the fact that he got the knockdowns, you see, it's not just beating a guy, but you put the guy on the canvas so many times that just changes the scores, period, because that's, you know, 10, eight round. The guy hitting the canvas. And they have to score the knockdowns because they were actual knockdowns. They weren't slips. They weren't iffy, this and that. Because if they're iffy, that gives the judges also a chance to say, well, I don't think that was a knockdown, even though the ref called it a knockdown. But it was clean knockdowns. Yeah, they have to score those, bro. They have to score them. That's why I feel like Manny Pacquiao did not defeat uh, Juan Manuel Marquez in their first fight. You know, he 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 knocked Juan Manuel Marquez down, I think, three times in that first round. But he lost almost all the rest of the rounds. So Juan Manuel, he lost that fight based on those knockdowns. But he won almost every single round after that. So basically, uh, Pacquiao got credited for the knockouts and therefore was thought the superior fighter. And each and every one of the subsequent fights, it was ebb and flow until Juan Manuel finally put Manny down on the canvas. But not only did he put him down on there once, he put him down twice in the second time for the count. But there was not going to be a way that they could give that to uh, Pacquiao in that third, in that, in that fourth fight. They weren't going to be able to do it. 
because Juan Manuel came to say, hey, I want to make a decisive victory this time. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> so. Shadow 979 says, in order for Yard to progress, he needs to go back to basics. Sparring is a must. Needs to work on his jab and head movement. He needs to learn how to pace himself better so he doesn't gas out. There's a lot more uh, Shadow 9 that uh, Yard is going to need to do. But that, those are great points to put on the bulletin board. Because that is all a part of what I feel he needs to do as well. But he needs to change his his psyche his, his his psychological approach to boxing i think that the young man has a loftier uh assessment of himself and his own abilities than what is actual and what is evident and until he changes that humbles himself and decides to break himself down and open up to teaching and proper teaching you're going to see more of the same and hopefully he can do these things. But in today's times, guys like that, they're more conducive to uh, making making excuses and placing blame externally, you see, instead of taking accountability, you know. So. Just a moment, fam. Responding to a message here. I'm I'm just waiting for a reply on this. Give me one second, family. Okay, all right, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, Joseph Brown says, great analogy. Thanks, uh, Joseph Brown. Von South D-Town says, this was an opportunity for Yard to get championship experience, and I hope him and his team make the necessary changes and learn from this fight to be a better force together in the future. Uh I had to read that again. I'm sorry, Bottom South D Town, because I don't think that I don't think that this team's philosophy is working in the best interest of Yard because they are doing things that would be more conducive to a you know, if you were like a MMA fighter or something like that or even amateur that that philosophy that they had and approach coming into this fight and possibly other fights prior to this dude that's not going to work it's not going to work did you see the efforts of buddy mcgirt in the other corner now kovalev has a history 
of not wanting to listen to his corner, not wanting to train hard, not wanting to respect particular people. You understand? I'm not going to get into that at this moment. But what Buddy was able to do was get that man to focus, refocus on the circumstances of where he found himself. Because Kovalev is probably still cutting corners in his training and everything. I don't think that he has slipped as much as he doesn't do what he did to get to the top. And he is aging. So now it's going to be more difficult. But I do believe that what Buddy McGirt was able to do was one, get him focused by telling him he was going to stop the fight if he had another round like that eighth round in front of his family and friends in his homeland and everything. And that made Kovalev say, hell no, you ain't going to stop this fight in front of my people, not my hometown, my homecoming. He, he refocused. And secondly, he got him to get back to the basics of utilizing one of his best weapons, which was his jab. Okay, the jab, the jab, the jab. And he did it so well that he ended up stopping the guy with the jab. You understand? So this is the difference in the corner's approach. Where was Yard's people telling him, get your damn hands up? Move your head. Get under that jab. Get your jab off. Where was that? You see the difference and the deficit in yards, people? Championship experience, it, you don't get it until you, you fight in the championship fight. But he didn't go into the fight for fucking championship experience. He went into the fight to fucking try to win a title. But he can't fucking win a title if he doesn't have the fortification to put himself in a position to win a fucking title. He didn't have the skills. He didn't have anything except for desire to try to compete. But he didn't have anything to fall back on. This is why it's important to have that kind of shit before you get in a title fight. Kovalev wasn't going to be standing in there holding some damn pads for him to slap around. Kovalev was in there to slap his ass around. This is all I'm saying. It's important for the people that you're getting your education from, meaning the trainers, the trainers, okay, to know what the hell they're talking about. Otherwise, you could get in there and you could get seriously hurt, man. You could get hurt. There are people who have died in this ring. You understand? It ain't no game. Huh? It ain't no fucking dance contest. Huh? And there's people that put money on this shit. Huh? Your life is on the line. Get your ass out there with some tools. If you lose with the best of the tools that you were able to fill with and fortify yourself with, so be it. You come back another day, you get stronger. But when you when you got an empty box, okay, and the only thing you got inside the motherfucker is a mirror, huh? You ain't ready. You ain't ready. Shadow 979 says, if your trainer doesn't believe in using training partners, then it's time to find a new trainer. Yeah. Joseph Brown says, facts. Buddy was in a great fight with Sweet Pea. He was an excellent fighter. Yes, sir, he was. The African Sci-Fi Scholar says, what's good, Stormy and Chat? What's good with you, brother? How you doing? Kenneth Johnson is out there and says, thanks for the knowledge, Stormy. 
Shadow 979 says, smash the like button. Yeah, thank you for that, brothers. I always forget to ask people to smash the like button because I'm so busy talking, man. But, uh, you know, it's it, it, you're right. You're right. Absolutely right. The chat is moving really fast. Bun South D-Town says, Earl Spent uses his jab really good in an educated way. That's right. And Earl Spence is going to win a lot of fights, man, because he knows how to use a jab. You understand? You could be hurt and use a jab to keep a guy off of you. You understand? You could be tired and use a guy, use the jab so you could survive the round because of your fatigue until you get your second wind. And a lot. that's another thing that a lot of fighters don't know about gassing out. You do get a second wind. But if you're not conditioned, the second win don't come for you, huh? You have to be conditioned to get a second win. And sometimes after the second win kicks in, you could go all night long then because you know you have confidence that you are in shape and you can go. You see, but inexperienced fighters, they don't know that because you've been knocking out everybody they put in front of you, soft touches. Huh? And you going out there and you thinking like, hey, I hit a guy like this and he go down. I can hit everybody like that and they go down. Even though you really know that ain't true, you still fight like that. And you get gassed out. And next thing you know, the guy getting your ass. Joseph Brown says, smash that like button. Lowland Prophet says, crybabies are so annoying. Beverly Rose Boxing and Entertainment says, hey, Stormy. Hey, Beverly Rose, how you doing? You got that wine, girl? Shadow, Shadow 979 says, at Beverly Rose, salute. Kevin Stenhouse says, salute, Stormy, and chat. Mahari Nation Sports Podcast says, good morning, Stormy B-Man. And, uh... Uh, Beverly Rose Boxing and Entertainment says, Shadow 9, 79, salute my brother. Uh, 78 Sports TV, the general's in the house. He says, salute Stormy in the chat. What's good, 78? Uh, Shadow 9, 79 says, at 78, salute. Joseph Brown says, 78, salute to the chat and the general. Macadon 1 says, salute at Stormy B-Man in the chat. Mahari Sports, Mahari Nation Sports Podcast says, do you think Anthony Yard needs to accept responsibility in his decision to keep a bad trainer in, in his team? Well, uh, Mahari, that, that, that's, uh, that's an interesting question because, of course, he has management, okay? And if his management is looking for him to take a step up to another level, than where he is, they have to be in a position to make the hard decisions. They shouldn't drop that in his lap. This is why you have management. Now, if management can't get that thought process under their under 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 uh, their directions, then maybe a reassessment of management. You see, but. That shouldn't fall in the lap of the uh, fighter. It should fall in the lap of the people that manage the fighter. And Mahari Sports Nation, uh, uh, Mahari Nation Sports Podcast says salute to the general of the LDBC. And so does Beverly Rose. Salute 78. Gil Cole says at 78. Sports TV, we need them t-shirts made, General. Lowland Prophet says, salute to the General. Uh, Joseph Brown says, Mahari Nation Sports Podcast, are you going to the Lara fight in the Armory in Minneapolis? I am Money Powell the third. I am. Money Powell the third is fighting on that card. It's next Saturday. Kevin Stenhouse says Canelo wants to fight Kovalev at 172, catch weight. Even though Canelo is the A-side, Kovalev don't need to fight him. Kovalev has the leverage. Canelo is the one who needs an opponent. Kevin Stenhouse, let me say this about 
Canelo Alvarez. If Canelo Alvarez wants to fight Sergey Kovalev, bring your ass up to 175, goddammit. Stop looking to get these damn weight clauses and everything like that. If you want to move, you a badass, move your ass up to 175 where this man fights and defends a title, okay? Don't come with that shit about, hey, give me three or four pounds and all of this shit. Bring your ass in the ring, Canelo. Stop running from quality opposition, from people who can compete with you, and stop making these damn idiotic uh, claims in terms toward weight clauses and shit. Or go sit your ass down somewhere. Because there's people out here who want to fight. Huh? Not try to have angles and shit. You want to do that? Go get, get, go get a Hollywood script writer and you can make movies where you are a fighter and you can win it a, a, according to the script. Huh? This is boxing, man. All of this trying to get somebody to fight at this weight and these few pounds less and these few pounds. Get the hell out of here with that shit. Christopher Jornet says, salute at the general, Gil Coles, Beverly Rose, Joseph Brown, and the chat. Joseph Brown says, Christopher Jornet, salute family. Bonton South D-Town says, this is why I say they should make the necessary changes, understanding what they are doing is not working. Joseph Brown says, Christopher Jornet, I'm going to be in New Orleans on Mardi Gras. We got a link up, family. Kevin Stenhouse said, if McGirt has stopped that fight, he wouldn't have made it out of Russia. I'm just saying. No, he, uh, Kevin Stenhouse, if, if Kovalev went out in the next round and took punishment like he was taken there and kind of stumbling around pillar to post, he could have stopped the fight justifiably because Kovalev was in danger. But Kovalev came back out like a champ and he fought. That's what that was supposed to do. It wasn't about taking the fight away from Kovalev. It was about motivating Kovalev and understanding, making him understand why he was there and refocusing him, refocusing him to the job that he needed to do to compete. That's what was important. Mahari Nation Sport, Sports Podcast is saying this is lit. Uh, shout out 979 says facts. The odd fella just fell into the building. He says it's fire. Christopher Jornet says that Joseph Brown for sure. The odd fella says preach. Joseph Brown says facts. Cook Stormy B is lit. Uh, Lowland Prophet says, real talk, 100. Christopher Jornet says, at Joseph Brown, what part of the country do you live in? Joseph Brown says, I'm in Minnesota. Christopher Jornet says, you are cooking. Lit, uh, Stormy B Man is fire. Uh, Christopher Jornet says, at Joseph Brown, you way up there. Joseph Brown says, uh, Christopher Jornet, way up in Mississippi. And Derek McGee says, salute family. What's going on, Derek McGee? Glad to see you out there, brother. What's happening with you? You know, listen, the significance of the chief second, you cannot rule that out. And when fighters are complete fighters, they can say that because of two things, the talent that they have and the person who was able to assist in cultivating that talent. You could have talent. But talent can sit right there in the middle of the ring and not get much done unless talent has been giving paths to do things. Give him a path to go this way, do that, and have this objective for that reason and look for this and expect for that outcome. That's what that's all about. You see, that's the, that's the teaching process. A lot of people don't understand that. But it exists for a reason. It exists for a reason. Joseph Brown says, Kovalev got his second win. Yards never came. Great point. Yeah, and it wasn't going to come. 
because he wasn't conditioned for it. You could see that when he was huffing and puffing after a couple of rounds and he was huffing and puffing after a couple of rounds because the event was getting to him. You understand? He was probably built to go six or seven rounds. Good. But the adrenaline rush, the press of the crowd, the environment, the event, takes two or three rounds off your conditioning right away especially if you haven't been there before see these are the intangibles that you guys don't really understand that affect a fighter he could put on that face and all that dancing and stuff like that that was a waste of energy too do you realize that most of the real good fighters when they come to the ring they basically calmly walk to the ring sometimes with their head down because they're thinking about their game plans and they're focusing they don't see the crowd they don't hear the crowd. They're trying to hone all of their their energy and focus into that opponent that's going to be across the ring when that bell rings. And he has to have that focus and that intensity geared up just specifically for that. All that dancing and jumping around and all of that shit, saluting the crowd and all of that, that's okay. But those experienced guys, they could get away with that stuff. But you coming into a situation where you ain't even never been there before. Okay. And the guy only had a few amateur fights. So he ain't even had like great amateur fights where he traveled around the world and fought with different types of fighters and different caliber fighters and everything. He had a very low uh, amateur background. So no Olympics or nothing like that where you could be on the world stage and you feel the heat and the pressure of what you have to face. None of that. Just this bullshit trainer talking in his ear, telling him this foolishness. Cursor says that Beverly Rose boxing and entertainment. Hey, Bev. Cursor's at Mojave Nation Sportscast. Salute. Joseph Brown saying Cursor salute. Derek McGee says that Joseph Brown. And Shadow 979 is saluting that cursor. Barton South D Town says, sometime I, sometime I lost is the best thing for a fighter and his trainer. A loss. It's not the end of the world that they can work their way back up. Yard is young. And to be honest, that fight was there for Yard to win. I'm going to tell you something, man. It's easy to say. If, woulda, coulda, and shoulda, right? In the aftermath. But he didn't. That's the reality. And see, we have to deal with realities here in life. Not fantastical circumstances of what if. Huh? We have to deal with what is. He lost. And he lost for a reason. If it were meant for him to win, he would have won. He made it close, but no cigar, honey. Huh? That's the difference. You want to put that man in there when he can win it. Not when he can compete for it and look good. That's the difference. That's the consolation. Stop giving him a fucking consolation trophy. He didn't accomplish shit. He got to go back and to the drawing board and start all over again. This isn't a former champion who competed for a title again and lost. This is a guy who could have been a champion had they started bringing him along the proper way and giving him the tools to be successful in championship competition. And they didn't do that. So there ain't no also ran trophy. Fuck that. You got a child in school. Your child deserved to be valedictorian but because another child is just fucking popular but they ain't been to school all year they've been you know cutting class and shit and they get that child the valedictorian over your child and when they go for graduation your child done put you up on i should have had the valedictorian not that person you'd be one like you want to kick that child's butt right your child could have been the valedictorian but your, that child got because of popularity that also ran competition that also ran 
consolation trophy. Get the fuck out of here. That's what's wrong with the world today. Huh? Earn your shit. Don't be afraid to roll your damn sleeves up and get out there and kick some ass. And sometimes when you're out there to kick ass, you know the old saying, you got to bring it to get it, right? So sometimes your ass get kicked. Don't be afraid to take an ass whooping. Life kick people in the ass every fucking day. Life has the toughest boots in the business. Huh? Shit kickings. Boots. And everybody gonna have a footprint on the back of their pants sooner or later. Don't be afraid to take an ass whooping. Joseph Brown says the real greats didn't do catch weights for red headed cheetah. You better believe it. Bush God 1029 says salute y'all salute Bush God. Good to see you this morning or oh, well it's afternoon now. And uh, Nassim the dream is out there he says salute at stormy B man. Shadow 979 says Joseph Brown. I totally re- agree with you on that. And uh, Shadow 979 says Joseph Brown. Canelo, the catch weight king. Bush God 1029 says the only advice they had for yard was lions in the camp. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, Cursor says that Nassim the Dream salute and Bush God salute. Nassim the Dream says that's Bush God and Cursor salute family. And Joseph Brown says shadow, shadow 979. Yeah, it's bullshit. Barton South D-Town is laughing. Joseph Brown says, straight up reality. Trump's fi- fiction. I'm not giving him no second place trophy in boxing. You ever, you either first or you last. You damn right. Huh? There's a winner and a fucking loser. Huh? And I say, you don't say there's a fucking winner. Huh? You say there's a fucking loser. That's what you say. Uh, and that's the shit that'll motivate your ass and make you go back in that gym, hit the bag, hit a sparring partner, hit the coach in his mouth for not getting you a sparring partner and want to get better and come back and get your shit. Huh? Not nobody patting you on the ass and rub your shoulder. Hey, it's all right, man. You did all right. Get the fuck out of here. Nassim the Dream says, Yard hit the wall in the eighth. He had three rounds to get his win back, and there was nothing in the tank. Kenneth Johnson says, Stormy B Man, it is simple anatomy. Yard is too muscular for championship fight to win. I'm sorry. Yard is too muscular for the endurance it takes to win a championship fight. Muscles equals lactic acid. Bonton South D-Town says, I am not giving him any trophies. I just know if he wouldn't talk, if he wouldn't take this fight, him and his team wouldn't have saw what they need to do and what they was doing was not working. What they was doing, Bonton South D-Town, even prior to him losing this fight, it wasn't working. They was just getting by and they didn't decide to change it. And they probably won't change it now because they didn't change it before. But see, that's okay. Because again, you're thinking from a different point of view. You're not thinking from the competitive point of view. Understand that. And this is why a trainer has to prepare a fighter to fucking fight. This is not just to compete. You want to put them in there to try to win. Huh? Huh? You could just be out there competing just like on the damn football field or something and get bowled over by the other team that's real aggressive. They're going to knock you on your ass. Joseph Brown says, 
Yard talked to talk, but he couldn't walk to walk. I'm not giving him shit. Show me you can do it. There you go. That's it. Kovalev, one round, was looking like he was ready to go. Then he came back out fighting like a champion. Huh? Y'all thought it was over. It ain't over, goddammit. It's just getting going. Listen, I said this before. In their first fight, Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bo in the 10th round. Bo had Holyfield on the hook. He hit Holyfield with this devastating uppercut and had him all reeling and rock, rocking around through that round. And he finally put Holyfield on the canvas. But they asked Holyfield, when, you, when this was happening, what did you think? And Holyfield said, well, I was thinking that now I got him where I want him. That's a fucking fighter right there. You understand? Holyfield said, now I got him where I want him because he think I'm vulnerable and he going to come for me and he going to leave himself open and I'm going to be able to get him. And sure enough, before the round was over, Holyfield was advancing on Riddick Bo and banging him around to the bell rang. So much to the degree that Bo gave him a little slap on the stomach and said, damn, Holy, you all right. You understand? That's championship shit right there. Bond South D Town says, I would rather him take that challenge and see where he was as a fighter than to take the million dollars step aside money that Canelo was offering. They believe they could win that fight before they fought. Hey, Bond South D Town, I am not going to get into a debate with you on these issues. You can feel how you want to feel about it, brother. But I'm going to tell you something. As a coach, I'll never see that way. I'll never see that point of view. Okay? Because that's not what we're conditioned to do. We're not. Huh? Nassim the Dream says, You spar to see where you are in a fight for the deep water. When I heard he didn't spar, I knew it was going to go bad. Uh-huh. Pretty much. Nassim the Dream says, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Barton South D-Town says at the end of the day, they went into that fight believing that they could win. So they took the challenge. Whatever happened afterwards happened. Yeah, you keep on thinking that, brother. Keep on thinking that. King Louie is in the house. He says, salute. What's going on with you, King Louie? How you doing, brother? I'm going to hit you up later. I got something uh, I want to talk to you about. Shadow 979 says that King Louis salute, sir. Yeah, man. But I'm going to tell you something. You have to have value in the corner and you have to value what comes from the corner. If that that's coming from the corner ain't worth valuing, you need to change the fucking corner. Huh? Angelo Dundee had to get in Sugar Ray Leonard's grill against Tommy Hearns and said, listen, you're blowing it, son. You got to be quicker. You got to take it away from him. You got to go out there and give him it, get in there. He did his ass. And that's what Sugar Ray did. He could have kept saying, you're doing all right, Sugar. You're doing all right. And Sugar Ray would have probably fucking lost the decision. But when he said, you're blowing it, kid, you're blowing it. You got to take it away from him. And Sugar Ray did just that. He said the right things, pressed the right buttons for his fighter to go out and be successful. Buddy McGirt did the same thing for Kovalev. I just wish that Buddy McGirt would get some brothers to work with that he could do that for. But nonetheless, it's still sound advice. It's still taking care. It's still putting your fighter in the most prime position to be successful. That's what that's about.
Joseph Brown says that was a, another great heavyweight. I had hypes for Bo after the fight. I didn't know that that would be the best Riddick Bo that we ever saw in the ring. Well, if you listen to Eddie Futch, you would have realized that was going to be the best of Bo that you saw in the ring. Shadow 979 says, at Nassim the Dream, straight facts. Cursor is at King Louis. Lala D says, good afternoon. What's good with you, Lala D? Good to see you, sister. Uh, chat's moving kind of fast now. He said, which fight are we talking about? Uh, Lala D, the uh, subject today was the significance of the chief second. That's what I've been cooking on. And, uh, I'll be shutting this down in a couple of minutes, sister, because 78 is coming on after this. And uh, he gave me a couple of extra minutes because I had some audio problems earlier, which with my show, it took about 12, 13 minutes off my show of trying to get that together. So uh, I'll be shutting this down in a couple of minutes. But I appreciate you coming out, supporting me. And please hit that like button, Lala D, and everyone else who has f fell into the building. Please hit the like button. Shadow 979 says, Joseph Brown, it's a damn shame we never got that Bo versus Lewis fight. Barton South D-Town says, okay. And Cursor says that Lala D, hey queen. And Lala D is at Cursor. So, you know, this is, this is what it is. You know, as I speak on what I could speak on, I speak with such passion about it because I understand. I've worked with people. I've been in there close with them. These people are living beings. They're not like action figures. And you have to look to take care of them when they're in there. You understand? What's best. And as long as you've given them the tools of the trade where they could go out and compete at the highest level, you let the chips fall where they may. But when people are cutting corners, taking PEDs, not doing their best, looking for easy routes and all of this catch weights and all this other stupid superficial bullshit, it don't, excuse me, it don't belong in the sport. And I don't like, I don't support that. You understand? I don't. I'm not going to support that. I support quality. Okay. And these guys don't, uh, they don't bring quality doing that foolishness you know so you know that, that's what I have to say about that but we can talk about it all day long you understand you know it, we can talk about it all day long so I want to say this to you guys and ladies that's out there as long as Stormy B man can talk about boxing especially when we talk about the involvement of the corners, the chief seconds and everything, and fighters who are not really competing at that highest level as they could. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna tell it like it is. You know? So, you know, I'm just gonna say, you know, that, that's all I have for y'all this afternoon. You know, I wanna say shout out to the LGBC, the Lions Den Boxing community. Please keep a lookout for the Friday night chop session with Stormy B Man. Keep an eye out for In the Eye of the Storm, which will be coming up in a couple of weeks on a Saturday morning, 10 a.m. And uh, look for my Kung Fu movie joints, too, because that's coming. You know, I think the next show, the Kung Fu uh, Chop Session, Kung Fu Edition, that'll be dropping this week. One day this week, I'll find a spot to put it in. And we're going to talk about The Hand of Death. OK, The Hand of Death, directed by John Woo and starring Jackie Chan, Tan Tao Lang, James Tien, and a host of others. Okay, but this is Stormy B Man. That's all I got for you at this time. Thanks for tuning in with me, and I'll see you again soon. Saying peace. <laughs>